I was selected to attend the Gates Foundation Goalkeepers in New York. The One Campaign is um, an adv advocacy organization founded about 20 years ago, which is geared towards ending extreme poverty and preventable diseases by 2030. Welcome to the King Obert podcast. In today's episode, we are going to delve deeper into the subject of social impact and volunteerism. With me is Gertrude Asumeru, who is doing so much in this space, in the act of volunteerism. Let's welcome Gertrude to the King Obert podcast. So Gertrude, welcome to the King Obert podcast. Hi, thank you so much for having me. So. How did this idea of getting into volunteerism and trying to give back to the society, how did it all with you? All right, thank you. So the, the idea, or initially the idea wasn't to get into volunteering. So I, a bit of background. So I graduated from the University of Leeds in 2016 with a degree in economics. And um, at the time when I was about to, my final year, I was still deciding what to what what to do, whether to do a master's degree or whether to um, just work. Or I didn't know what to do, so I was yeah. trying to look for like I, I definitely knew one thing. I knew was that I did not want to pursue. So the 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 mindset or the the was the word I'm looking for. So the idea is that when you're done with like economics or accounting or finance, whatever degree you have to work in, you know, all these financial big four firms or whatever, that was definitely yeah. not for me. Like I kind of enjoyed my course to an extent, but I did not want to pursue that kind of career route. So no. So I was looking at a, a career path that like would make me make more impact on people. Like, like, sort of that kind of thing that was what I was looking for so I attended a lot of like career workshop sessions on campus which um the University of Leeds was really good in that um part so I think I stumbled on a, I stumbled on an opportunity somewhere in 2015 uh which is mm -hmm. the the one campaign the one campaign is um an adv advocacy organization founded about 20 years ago which is geared towards ending extreme poverty and preventable diseases by 2030. So yeah. they were recruiting, they have a, they still run the program, which is the Youth Ambassadors Program. Now this program just basically um, uses young people's voices or young people to advocate or to campaign for, you know, on global issues. So I found that and I thought that was great. That was cool. That maybe this is where I could start from. Actually, a year before I applied and I didn't get in and I applied in my final year and I got in. So in 2017, that's when I would say officially I, because I was already doing a lot of volunteering work and stuff on campus, but not within this, um, should I say third sector or international development sector. It was more like, you know, university stuff, but this was more about me trying to find my way into a career path. And mind you, this sector is very competitive and most mm -hmm. of the time you need experience and the experience that you can gather will probably come for volunteering. So I was yeah. happy to have gotten, you know, this opportunity because, you know, getting opportunity is hard these days and everybody wants somebody who wants experience, blah, blah, blah. So I got into it and I'd say that was the beginning into like, you know, it's been seven years now since 2017, January, February. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll say that was um, my, how I started this whole thing. And it's just been, you know, built my confidence it's been one campaign after the other you know just going to see my local mp for the first time actually i grew up in ghana and i've never seen my mp i don't even know who he was like in ghana but when i moved yeah. here in 2012 after secondary school and um came here five years later you know i lived in a community where I, I i didn't really i still don't really care about politics i'm not really a political you know to politics like that but because of the one campaign like you know it i've I realized the importance of um, lobbying politicians yeah. and MPs and what have you. So that was like my foreign today. And my MP has been amazing, great guy. And like before my acquaintance, I'll go into that maybe more later, but then um, I would say that for me, everywhere I stand, like it's been rewarding so far. And 
to an extent and the one campaign was sort of like my um foray into you know this whole um sector or making an impact in like in the lives of people or advocating for change if you like to put it that way so i don't know if i answered your question but then yeah that was yeah. it that's that is that is great so um you you got this whole idea when you were back in the uni and you've leveraged on that and then you are making yeah. these giant strides in this space of uh, volunteerism so you are now an ambassador for one campaign what what actually do you do what's your role specifically as as a youth ambassador for one campaign so okay so i was a youth the youth ambassador program runs every year so every year they recruit a cohort of i think 40 50 youth ambassadors okay. across the whole uk and you know as the year goes by obviously the competition toughens so i was a youth ambassador for two years two and a half years and you can okay. you can stay after you know after every cohort you can choose to stay or you know leave and you know they recruit okay. another call like that so i stayed for mm-hmm. two years and i only left because i was going to do my master's in the in the netherlands at the time in 2019 um, August. So um, two years ago, about two years ago, they launched a new program, which is the Community Leaders Program. And this is for more advanced campaign or people who have more experience in, you know, this campaigning and advocacy stuff. So I joined that and it's been almost two years now. So um, I'm not no longer a youth ambassador, but I'm still volunteering with the one campaign this time around as a community leader, which is quite similar to the youth ambassador program, but it's just that we have more like authority about, let's say, organizing our lo- own local community actions and, you know, things like that, which the youth ambassadors barely do have. But then, yeah, it's, it's been amazing. Like, cause I mean, due to my, and, and within the program as well, like I'm, I'm a team leader. So I work, um, alongside with the program coordinator a lot, you know, with the whole program management coordination, blah, blah, blah. But, um, because you asked, I'm sure maybe we'll go into d- detail much later, but due to being an ambassador, quote unquote, or, you know, working or volunteering with the one campaign last year, uh, I was selected to attend the Gates Foundation goalkeepers in new york it's like an annual gathering of um global activists and chain makers it's a two-day event and it's i mean i've been to new york before once but for another program but then this time around it was for this and it was it was you know inspiring to hear people's stories what people are doing in very difficult situations how there's this story that stuck with me of this midwife working in i think uganda or congo i can't remember but in a village where she has to like sacrifice her so she's just part of her money her, like her salary and also she has to sacrifice like she so she she doesn't cut her hair so that the money that she would have used to cut her hair she actually uses this, you know to save you know more pregnant women which i found like it was very inspiring so yeah, interesting so you know listening to some of these stories like in such rooms like you know it makes you feel like you know people there are people doing amazing work and even though i would love to be more like hands-on or at the grassroots level which i'm thinking of doing like back in ghana um, soon but it's also been amazing like you know using my voice and finding myself in such places drawing from people's stories and you know being inspired by their journeys and all that i mean last year for example as well i went to number 10 to deliver a petition to you know, the prime minister, I think in June, in June or July, there was um, a climate, um, it's called the Global Fact, um, Pact Financial Summit happening in Paris. It happened in Paris and it's all like world leaders come together to commit to ending the climate crisis. I don't know how many people are familiar with you know, the climate change, but you know it's something that has been on for a number of years now. And even though um, genuinely or um, I'm, I was more like passionate. I'm, I'm still more passionate about advocating for education and gender equality, but I found I've also campaigned on different issues, which I feel as much important as, you know, education as well and gender equality. So, you know, getting to do that, you know, handing a petition to like the highest office in the UK, I would say, was also like, um, should I say, one of the things that I've done or inspiring things to me as a a community leader and uh, a couple of them as well. So yeah, it's, it's been, it's been amazing, amazing journey so far, even with the challenges. So to with today, if you are no more a volunteer, if you are no more a campaigner, if you are no more an activist, right. Mm-hmm. Would you say you are satisfied about everything you have achieved in this space? 
Um, yes and no. Yes, because, <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'm not going to lie. Yes, because, like I said, I, I've i kind of gotten like um, a, a deep or a look into how these things work. So, you know, there's a campaign last year. The last time I actually went to my MP's office to lobby him was last year. We worked on a refugee um, crisis campaign. Um, so I went there, you know, with, um, I sent him a document that the one campaign had um, a research that they've done into the issue and how the Home Office and, you know, the UK government itself can, you know, help in um, um, creating like an additional budget towards refugee costs. So, you know, I went there, obviously I, I forwarded or emailed the, the paper to him in advance, went there and also, I mean, told my story. And I like to, you know, always craft my campaign messages and like telling yeah. stories and then uh, obviously um, backing it with some facts and figures and all that. So at the end of the day, that's like, you know, sends the message across and, yeah, it's it, 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 it kind of like, so for me, how I see it is that the yes is that it's, I'm able to like um, sell, not a sell a story, but convey a message to, you know, someone in a higher position who can do something. Mm -hmm. So the only thing I can do is like use my voice or use my social media. I write as well, so write a blog, post it, let someone read it, you know, use social media for good awareness about something that I'm passionate about. But then on the other hand, like I also want to see that message be, to be pushed across, you know, on a higher level. That's why I go and see my MP, you know, that's why I, I, I encourage him to write to the foreign secretary. If like, it's about funding and, you know, the UK needs to boost funding. Like I think a campaign that uh, we did on the on global fund, which was to um, end HIV, TB and malaria by 2030. So, I went to see him and, you know, I advocated for the UK to commit a certain amount of money, you know, very specific, like 1.8 billion. And at the end of the day, it was 1 billion, not quite the 1.8 billion we wanted, but yeah. at least it's still like, you know, we still were, were able to, because I think initially that was, there was, the, the, the government didn't want to commit at all. So with this civil society campaigning and, you know, making noise in the media and all that, at least it was able to, you know, get something done. So that is the yes for me. Like, at least even if I don't get 100% what I wanted, but I'm able to, you know, speak and I'm able to call someone to listen, you know, pay attention, write to someone, raise it in parliament, you know, whatever. The noise that sometimes it can get draining. Because um, to be honest, like I'm a huge advocate for the UN Sustainable Development Goals, which came right after the the end of the Millennium Development Goals in 2015. So now we okay. um, between 2015 and we have 2030 as like you know the target year. So 2030 is like what for we are in 2024, so six years away, six and. Years away. I mean, to be very honest, there is no way in, in 2030 there'll be no poverty. It's, it won't happen. <laughs> That's like the, the, the realistic thing. There's yeah. no way. In fact, there's a, um, a, it says that there's a report that came out that says that we are like 230 years away from achieving gender equality. That is okay. insane. So there is no way in 2030 we would achieve gender equality. So, you know, these are the goals that the UN brought up in 2015 sustainable development goals and there are targets under each of the goals so goal one has targets and you have a b c i i i you know there's a lot of things even in just yeah, one goal there. exactly so the the, the no is like i feel like the goals are very ambitious which is a good thing because you know it kind of also pushes us as campaigners as activists or people who care about the world or making the world a better place to you know do more but then at the end of the day like the only like i said the only thing i can do is just like this like a very tiny bit of um, the whole percentage or the whole fraction so yeah sometimes i you ask yourself are you really making an impact or is it just something that you say to make yourself feel like important or you know but then like mm -hmm. i said at the end of the day you can only do what you can do if i sure. as an activist if i go above and beyond to make sure my voice is said and my m because for me, my MP has been really good. Like he's labor and amazing guy. Like there's no time. I mean, getting to see him has been very less difficult over the years. Cause like now his office knows me like get you. Cause I call constantly. Like if I want to see him, oh my God, like I send emails, I call till I like, get to see him. And you know, sometimes he makes out time of his schedule. So I don't just see him doing his surgery. I was like, 
10, 5 minutes, but I seem like 30 minutes or even more because we have a conversation. But unfortunately, not everyone has. I've, I've heard people say their MPs will not even see them because they don't believe in all these campaigns yeah, and all these things that we are advocating for people in Africa. What do you mean by I should care about people, you know, facing hunger yeah, crisis in East Africa? What, yeah. Exactly. When UK has its own problems and all that. But International development is also a part because UK commits 0.7% of their GNI towards these things, but it's been cut to 05 which is another story for another day. So these things are, it's part of, you know, the whole economy, but there are people whose MPs don't care. But I'm glad that like I have somebody who's who cares and not just him, but his party as well. And he he seems to be someone who supports these things. So sometimes as a, as, as an activist, you feel powerless. You feel like, you know, your voice is not being heard, not because you're not using it, but because the channel through which it has to go through to get the desired to the desired end is not is not effective as you want it to be. So it kind of leaves you in a certain certain mood. But for me, I feel like it's it's been rewarding and it's been it's opened so many doors for me. I'm not gonna lie. And yeah, it's it's just, you know, little by little we we'll get there. Even if we don't achieve the 2030 goals, which is mm-hmm. fine. We will still set your other goals and, you know, hope to achieve them someday, somewhat. Great, great. So do I do I need some kind of special qualities to be able to get into this space of volunteerism and then going ahead to make impact, giving back to the society? Do I need to have a certain kind of qualities or skills as an individual? I... Honestly, I, 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 myself, I wouldn't even say, to be honest, I, I'm not sometimes, you know, when people tell you things about you and sometimes you wonder, oh, like, is it me that they are giving all this accolade or is it me that they are talking yeah. about? Because <laughs> I struggle with insecurity. I struggle with self-esteem. I struggle all this, but you know, somebody tells you, oh, I admire you because you're so confident or, you know, yeah. you're so this, you're so this. And, you know, it's, 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 it's just part of, you know, the whole human lifestyle. But I wouldn't mm-hmm. say you need, see, like, let me tell you, like, everybody can make a change or anybody can, can do anything. Like, it's just that sometimes people just need a push or people just need wow. someone to tell them that you can do it. Sometimes you, you, don't do need, it. you don't need, you don't need an essay or you don't need prayers or you don't, you just need one day to just make up your mind to do it and then you do it so the first time I remember I had to go see my MP I was so nervous because I knew his name obviously like I put in my postcode okay this is the man I'm going to meet he's he's belongs to this party okay this party is quite you know like they 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 like or they like to campaign or they are passionate about these global issues or these things that we talk about so that's a plus Mm. um okay like but personality wise how is he gonna be would he care about because at the time we were advocating for um, girls' edu- um, education in developed countries. Because even now, I think, because at the time in 2017, 2018, there was like 130 million girls out of school worldwide. That is crazy. Like 130 million. Oh my God. Like 130 million girls out of school. Yes. That's at, that's at the time. So now I think it's reduced, but it's still okay. like, it's still, it's still a lot think it's still around 100 and something minutes so as a girl i grew up like i said i grew up in ghana and fortunately for me i my parents were able to send me to to school through to you know secondary school university level to you know but not not everyone had that opportunity and we all know how things are back home i don't even want to go into that Mm -hmm. so like you know having that privilege and finding myself in a country like uk and happening to be a one campaign youth ambassador and this is the first campaign I worked on like I was intrigued like I was I was like okay like you know I need to you know talk about this I need to relate it to situations back home like growing up and all that and like I said like I like I like to tell stories so I was just sometimes like the confidence comes when I'm just there like having to deliver the message so i always tell people that like it's it's being an activist is that everybody can be an activist and you don't even need to be in this there are people who work like some of my colleagues within the community leaders program they work in like finance and you know different industries and they still do these things you know so they are not necessarily within the third sector or international development space but they do this thing because they care like they care about the world they care about you know other people's lives being better 
and irrespective of you know the conditions and whatever they have to go through. So personally, yeah. I'll, I'll, I wouldn't say like you need any any whatever superficial or any super whatever extraordinary skills to be. You just have to first of all care about excuse me care about making the world a better place and you know just find an organization or some uh, organization or um a, a place or people who have shared mission and purpose or values and then you just align with them and i just guess you just just start really if you, if you can write write if you can maybe you know tweet at your mp because i do that a lot tweet if you can go see your mp during his surgery hours to talk about this issue do it like even if if it something anything small that you think there's nothing too small like just do it because you care and then yeah you you never know like it just takes one step and you just keep on building it from there really Oh, great. So, for for you or to you, you don't need special any special qualities to be able to stand out as a volunteer. All you need is that you need to take a step, and sometimes yeah. you need people to push you to to get to where you want to get to. Because yeah, um, it's not always it's not always about you, but sometimes somebody must you know create a certain kind of like yeah. a stage for you to get on. Then you yeah. can you can advance yeah. advance your case. Yeah. So so yeah. How how are you using social media to to inspire change or to cause change as as a change maker? So social media has been a huge part of this all this thing that we do. So when I say we do as mm -hmm. you know activists, so I created yeah. a Twitter account, I think somewhere in February 2014. I never used it till I joined one. Because we that's when we started okay. doing the hashtags, you know, the tweeting and the MPs and you know all these things and tagging you know relevant organizations that you know have shared purpose with you know what we are doing. Because if within the international development space, you have different organizations doing similar things. So if you talk about one, you talk about Oxfam, Results, Christian Aid, you know, all these organizations they work towards you know reducing extreme poverty impacting the lives of people you know especially in africa developing um countries and all that so you know all these things you know it helps bring draw attention to the campaign when i went to see my mp I, you know took a picture with him after the first time you know tweeted that okay i've gone to see my mp to talk about this and tagged the one the one campaign in uk their twitter account and tagged yeah. him himself and you know he retweeted and you know the one campaign also retweets and i did quote and then thank him thank you for seeing our ambassador so so and so to talk about blah 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 so you know all those things like it just you know people because you you People get to see that, okay, this is the one campaign. This is what they are doing. This is this girl who went to see their MP talking about this. And it gets people intrigued. It gets people interested. And like I said, you never know, you know, who you even inspire with just this one tweet or one thing that you did. And for um for example, two years ago, actually, when I went to see my MP that year, I think that was the same year, 2017, I went to the European Parliament in Brussels for the first time. So we had the summit, the, the, the One Youth Summit. And at the time, the UK was still in the EU. So there were some UK members of the European Parliament there. So we went to see them. We talked to them about this um, poverty, sexist, sexist, which is the girls' education campaign and all that. So that was a good thing. And that was my first time in the newspaper as well, local newspaper in the UK here. So mm -hmm. I reached out to, and that's also one of the hardest things ever, like trying to get into the media or the press. Which 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 newspaper is that? It's, uh, I think it was the Yorkshire, Yorkshire Evening Post. It's, I mean, I'm, I mean, oh, okay. so like, that's like the, yeah. try to say the local, whatever news, yeah. The local, so the local newspaper. getting into that was also hard, you know, after conquering the social media space and, you know, getting your message out there, which is something that we, um, they, they recommend, or when I say they, I mean one or as part of the campaign, yeah. but also taking a step further to get, you know, into the press or the media or newspaper, whatever is also another thing, but with persistence and resilience, you know, I was able to get uh, get that. So, like, you know, they send you like a link to your piece in the the local what what the their newspaper. And two years ago, when I went to see my MP to talk about the global fund campaign towards ending TB, HIV, and malaria, he tweeted. He tweeted on his personal account, and um, a local um, new journalist picked it up and contacted me that he wanted to um, interview. And I was like, okay, okay, great. So we, he called me on phone. We spoke for about 20 minutes ish. Like just asking me about, you know, 
my why I got into activism, blah blah blah, and he published it and. Yeah, a, and that same year for that campaign, at the end of 2022, I I won an award as, as well for best MP advocacy within the one campaign. So that 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 was a good thing, and you know that th- these are just like a few of I say the things that like yeah, apart from the whole yeah. social media thing, also like you know be dealing or should I say getting your campaign into the press, which is something that they really like admonish or like um, advocate for that. We, they help us to do it, but you know, at the end of the day, it's also behoves on the individual themselves. And you know, these are just some of the things. And also, uh, I think in 2018, Amnesty International was doing this thing called the Suffragette Spirit Campaign Map. So it was 2018 marked 100 years since women had the right to vote in the UK, I think. Yeah, so okay. Amnesty International put this map. So they featured, I think, was it 100 or women across different areas in the UK? So I think they reach out mm-hmm. to individuals or people to select people within women within their community, you know, doing amazing work that they wanted to feature. And I'm not sure why, but I think it will probably be my MP who nominated me because I was surprised when I received an email ask, telling me that somebody had nominated me. So they asked me to provide yeah. like a brief biography, blah, blah, blah. And I said it. And then on International Women's Day, in March 2018, it went live. And yeah, I was there. So. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You you are you are really, you know, writing your own kind of story. And it's it's amazing to hear when, you know, young men and young women doing so well in the space where they find themselves. And I must say that you are really making an impact. You are changing lives. Yeah. So how have you been connected through the act of volunteerism? Like how big has your network become? Maybe through the connection of the social media, through getting into these posts, uh, newspapers, connecting with people. How large is now your network, and that you can reach out to? Um, I think, um, yeah, that's for the network, it all starts like from within, like a fellow campaigners or mm-hmm. activists, because yeah. you know you all work on the same thing. So, like, it's 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 always easier to connect with them because you have like a shared mission and all that. Then, um, yeah, I am I work on other like campaigns with other charities like Restless Development, and there's also another one, Child or Org. There's also another one called The World. They're also an education based, like you know, activism organization advocating for equality in education and results and you know other ones so um i think for me it is also about like um i i look for some of i look no not some i look for most of these opportunities myself so like i use linkedin a lot linkedin has been like a a blessing because um it's it's easier to like you know you see people's um profiles or maybe somebody likes or comments on somebody's post and you, you yeah. see on your timeline and maybe you look at the person's profile and this is someone maybe within the same space that you can benefit from or you can, you know, link up or whatever. Then like me, you, you follow, I follow them. I, I engage in like a lot of like youth um, and networks and like, um, um, was it two years ago or last year, there was this fellowship that I joined. It's called, it's by the UN um, Sustainable Development Solutions Network, SDSN for short. So there's this, um, um, fellowship it's called local pathways fellowship so that is geared towards sdg 11 which is building sustainable cities and communities by 2030 so that like i joined that and i well i i was accepted onto that two years ago and that's like a huge network because they have like about five thousand or ten thousand like you know youth across the world so being in something like that obviously like you're connected forever because we have like our own space that we people post opportunities if people post out like if you're interested to speak through that alone i got like two speaking opportunities last year so you know that is you know another thing on its own then we have um un women uk so the un women uk is under the un women and Right now, the Commission on the Status of Women, it happens every year. So this year is the 68th um, session. So last year I joined as a UK delegate, which was great. And this year too, you know, I, I joined again and, you know, the sessions are ongoing till I think the end of next week or so. So, you know, all this is like a platform of about like almost six, 7,000 women. So like, you know, that's a lot of, <laughs> that's connection right there. So um, yes, yes, it's, yes, it's yes, yes. I, on top of my head. And there's also like another one that is called Unite 2030. It's also a group of young chain makers, activists. You know. So 
in this space here, yeah, I always tell people, you just have to go looking for some of these things. You just don't sit down and like, I don't know if it, it's, I think it's, it's also a personal thing. It, not everybody is ambitious and it's okay. Like not everybody really wants to spread their tentacles and, you know, yeah. do all these things. You can't, it's, it's, I think it's, it's personal. But for, for me, I feel like, in a, I was I've been blessed in a way to be here since 2012. Like I I went to uni here and I finished uni and mm-hmm. blah blah blah. So some of the opportunities that I may, may not have been exposed to if I I wasn't here I was exposed earlier on, and yeah. um I, I'm glad that like I took advantage of it and it's been helpful. It's 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 actually you know helped me a lot and it's it's should I say added to uh, my achievements quote unquote if you want to put to that but aside from the achievements be able to like make me like do things that I know that you know made an impact even if it was on few people 10 people 100 people whatever like it, it doesn't matter like to me it's still like something great so uh, for the connections like I, I I believe I'm well connected within the space because of the many like volunteering and other like youth networks and platforms that I'm privileged to be on because of fellowships that I was accepted onto or organizations that I'm a p- part of because of volunteering again and you know all these other networks so um, I don't know if you come to that, but recently I co-founded my own not-for-profit with a friend who is also an activist with one, which is the Global Net- Activist Network. And I'm like leveraging on these platforms as well to like let people know about what we are doing and, you know, also tap into their knowledge and be able to join us to like us to our mission as well. Great, 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 great. You, you are doing, you are doing so well. And um, when, when you met the UK's Minister for Security and Energy. What specifically did you talk about? What did you discuss? Why why was the reason for meeting uh, him? Okay, good, good, good. Um, I'm not sure I included this in my bio, right? I don't think I did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yes. yeah, I met him last year, just the week after I came back from New York, from Goalkeeper. So, okay. and even within, let me tell you, so even within this... um volunteering thing like so i've I've realized that it's just like if you are very like up to speed with things or you are very proactive you get into a lot Mm -hmm. of places so let me before i answer your question this number 10 opportunity so within like i said within this the program like the last year like i was nominated as the team leader so i work closely with the the program coordinator so she reached out to me and she was like oh like she was supposed to go to number 10 but she can't attend um can i is this something i'm interested in it's about this that that." and i'm like okay cool then i went and you know it wasn't i I went with three we were four in total but like i did a presentation when we got there we took pictures blah 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 and that was it and we did Mm -hmm. other individual videos and one put it together and made a post about it so um that was before the Paris summit then I went to New York for goalkeepers so when I came back that week and um they posted on the group that oh they need um a CEO to um join and a youth ambassador to meet with the energy security minister to um blah 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 and I reached out to um, the program coordinator that has, I, I left, I think I didn't want to sound like, you know, sometimes cause last year I did a lot of things and it's not because, because if other people are not as interested in these things, like I am. So when the opportunity comes, I just say, okay, I'm interested. Yeah. You just grab it. <laughs> exactly. So I intentionally left, I think four five or almost a day. So I reached out to mm-hmm. the program coordinator. Has anybody come forward? She said no. And I'm like, okay, I'll do it. So I went and it was to, so we, so to the reason why we went to see the minister was, so, you know, the COP26 was held in the UK in 2021 in Glasgow. Yeah. And um, the, so two years later, now we are going to COP28 in Dubai. So we went to see the energy security minister. Yeah. As sort of like, um, okay, two years later, how has the UK committed to the climate finance commitment that they said they would at the COP26? Because I, I was running a campaign with Christian Aid at the time on the climate crisis. So I went to see my MP at the time, not this MP. I was living in another part of Leeds. So I had another MP. Okay. So I went to okay. see her and she was she's also labor and she was also quite receptive, telling me about, you know, what 
Labour is plans to do or, you know, how they are committed to this whole climate crisis um, thing, which was great. But then it was it was it was it was uh was looking forward to hear it from the minister himself and obviously like if he was going to attend the cop 28 and not just attend but also obviously like how they are going to fund people living in difficult conditions like this east africa hunger crisis which we went for a parliamentary lobby day last february last year in february and you know all that so that was just an opportunity to hear from him about first of all um, how far two years later and now COP28 Dubai, like, you know, what is, what is your government or what, what, what are your commitments and, you know, what should we expect, you know, afterwards? Yeah. So yeah, that was, that was basically the reason. Wow. Wow. So through volunteerism, you've had the opportunity to meet the UK's energy minister, minister yeah. and you had fruitful conversations and you know some fruitful results came out of it that is yeah. that is the power of of volunteerism or getting to that space um one will ask is it financially rewarding as you know in a world where we are all looking for money you know <laughs> our, our minds are fixed on you know making the money first so yeah. it's not more or less about making the impact get the money first and you make the impact but yeah. for you as as an activist as a volunteer is it financially rewarding? Let me be honest with you. So I don't know if you were going to ask this um, maybe later on, but if you weren't, I, yeah. I'll just chip this in. Yeah. So <laughs> volunteering means it doesn't come with, like we are not paid. It's not yes. like a nine to five job that you, yeah, you're yeah, guaranteed yes, of <laughs> some thousands of pounds at the end of the month, which, you know, yeah. it's fine. So it's been the only thing that has been rewarding, I would say, is in terms of the opportunities that is brought forth, because there are certain opportunities that if you're not aligned or into certain things, you won't get it. Yeah. Even yeah. if you're working, obviously, like you're nine to five or you're earning like, you know, good amounts of living, there's no way you get to go to number 10 if it's not, you know, something related to a cause that is geared towards, you know, making the lives of people better or towards a global issue or something like that. There's no way you will get to be invited by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, a fully funded trip to come to New York for this two day, you know, event. To, so d these are some of the things, you know, you get to, you know, have an acquaintance with your local MP and, you know, he recognizes you. Like I remember sometime I hadn't seen him in a year or two, we met at this, um, um, so I went for like a match, uh, it was towards climate justice in yeah 2021. And I didn't even know he was coming to speak at the event. It was in somewhere open, an open space in Leeds city center. So I was just standing there and I saw like, oh, so I went, he was like, hi, how have you been? It's been ages. I hope you're fine. What are you up to now? Like, I didn't even introduce myself, but like, you know, he just started talking because I thought it's been ages. So he probably have, you know, forgotten yeah, my face and all. Happened. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, oh, like anything you need, like, you know, let me know, like, if there's anything. So, like, you know, that alone, you know, to me, it's one of the most rewarding things. Back to your question. No, it's not financially rewarding. Like, it's not. You're not paid. And um, another thing is, so I, the reason why I, I, I still do these things is because I really want to get into policy making. You know, after after campaigning, advocating for some of these things great i'm not saying it's not it's not good it, you always have to start from somewhere but for yeah. me i want to be involved in some of these policies that you know the campaigners come with or if the um, campaigner comes to say oh maybe we need the government to invest so so and so into health or into education there are people who are in charge of making that happen and i want to be like in those spaces where that happens because i believe that like look there's there, there's so much that's you know government policymakers can do to make the work of these um companies way easier and um that is like i want to be in such space where like you know i'm heavily involved in some of these things and getting into these places is hard what has kept me going as you know as a volunteer is just i felt i don't always i'm not always like this i don't always believe in myself like like, like that sometimes yeah. you know because i have like my own stories as well of, you know, failures yeah. and non-achievements and all that. But I just can't, you know, resist the edge. Whenever I see an amazing opportunity that I believe will get me one step closer to my goal, I, I grab it. 
if I've obviously I've been rejected so many times from some of these programs and some of these things, but then, you know, I still go on to apply for others because, hey, the, the worst I'll get is a no, which is which is also okay. You know, it's not going to kill me. It's never, it's never yeah. done. It never will. So, um, yeah, it's, it's not rewarding. And I, I, I wish it was actually now that I founded, like I founded, co-founded with a friend. One thing I discussed with her is like, I don't like the fact that, you know, young people, you know, we are told that we are the future, we are the blah, blah, blah. But at most times, some of these big, big organizations, I'm not going to mention it as well. I've seen now, some of them are doing better, but most of them, you know, do not pay their interns or volunteers. Even if someone is volunteering for you, like whatever they are researching, writing reports. I've done some of these volunteering things. You went online, you went online, um, whatever, volunteering. So you don't have to be there physically. You can just volunteer with an organization virtually and for maybe a yeah. few hours a week for a period of maybe a few months and you get a certificate at the end of the day and all that. So I, I discussed with her that, I don't want us to be like that. I mean, now we don't have any funding. We just launched last month in February, early February. But as time goes on, I want us to find a way to pay, pay like our volunteers, like some sort of like remuneration, even if it's just, I don't know for, if they said they work 20 hours a month, like how much can we, cause right now we recruited um, a team of three. So now we are five in total. As time goes on, maybe we'll, we'll actually need to recruit more. But then if let's say we're a team of seven, I want us to be able to remunerate everyone on a monthly basis because I've put in so much work into volunteering. And if I always say that if I was paid, I would have been rich by now, very rich because okay. in as much as, I, I didn't get paid. I'm happy or I'm, 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 I'm glad or I'm quite excited about the things I've gotten on it out of it, but I would have been more excited if sometimes, you know, you get some sort of remuneration out of these things, you know, because you, the whole back and forth at a point I used to go to London maybe every other month or, you know, sometimes a few times in the week because of volunteering stuff, because we are going to parliament, because we have to go for a lobby day, because we have to do this. And, I was all doing these things because, you know, I wanted to get the experience because I've been to the UK Parliament about four or five times now for yeah. different purposes, which is good. But then at the end of the day, I want to, you know, get paid at the end of um, some way, somewhat. And I put all these things on my CV, you know, you apply for jobs. I mean, I have a master's degree now, thank God, like I, I almost four years ago and still getting into this sector, you know, with all the amazing work that, you know, you've done. It's so, so competitive. You have no idea. You have yeah. no idea. So it's it's frustrating sometimes. I'm not going to sit here and say that, oh, yeah, it's paid off in a way, but even trying to use it to get to where I want to be, like career-wise, you know, the rejections, you 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 know, you, you, you go for interviews. I've had a couple of interviews just few, a few, a month ago and just two weeks ago, you talk about all these things and, you know, you know that you're spitting, like you're, 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 you're actually, you know, being covered, you're saying all these things, you know that you're lying, like the evidence is there and it's clear, but you, you, you still get a rejection and it's, it's yeah. hard and it's hard to swallow, <laughs> it's a hard pill to swallow, but what can you do? You can just hope for the best and you hope that one day, you know, you knock on the right door and, you know, it will be a yes and it, it will just make all, all your dreams and all you had in mind come to pass. So for me, I I I I uh, I've been in, I've been doing this for seven years now. To, not just with one, but with other charities. But um, I would really like for it to start paying off now. Like because I believe that I've built so much experience within the field, and I I don't know what else I I should do. But I feel like, and I'm happy that I founded my or I co-founded something with a friend, which we are i'm also managing on the sides because you know you have to keep things going as the executive director and all that but then personally career-wise because not just about you know getting into the policy field or you know making things happen but i also want to fund other projects that i have in mind in ghana within the same sector you know like as an ed education and you know gender equality and all that so it's yeah so so more or less, more or less, this this is a full time job for you, right? Yes. This is a full time job you are you are into. Apart yeah. from this space, volunteerism, you are not into any kind of uh, so, other activities. So uh, well, I I mean, uh, last year I worked briefly in like a communications agency in London. Um, mm -hmm. I was there for you see, like I feel like when you discover yourself, 
or your purpose as a human being when you when you stay at a place that is what is not your it's not aligned you just feel yeah, like you see. yeah yeah I'm you, you just don't feel comfortable and yeah. that's how i felt because i finished my masters in 2020 unfortunately just when covid started 2020 mm -hmm. june so i didn't have a graduation graduated in one of the worst periods ever so <laughs> getting a job was like and well the way the bible says it's difficult for a rich man to enter heaven done for a sh uh, whatever to go through the eye of the needle yeah, yeah. it was it was like impossible and it was really hard on me because i had i, I did my master's master's in the netherlands had to come back to the uk even though i wasn't sure if i should come you know start looking for jobs and it was almost impossible hard to settle and this is something that you know people don't talk about i had to settle for a menial job to pay the bills and all yeah. that then you know went to Ghana, went to chill for six months straight because I just needed that time of this place, came back and it's like, you know, reality still starting, like staring you in your face, like, okay, what's this all about? And, you know, but on the side, like I, I like to keep a positive attitude sometimes, even though it's not always easy. I mean, I teach on the side, I'm a tutor. I've been tutoring for almost eight years now, since 2016 when I finished uni and it's, it's also paid off to an extent, like, you know, part-time, like, you know, sometimes I, 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 I online to train or just physical, mostly um, physical. Most of the teaching that I've done, you know, parents want you to come in, you know, and I understand. Okay. So the only thing that the, the teaching I'm doing currently is, is it's online, but then what I've done in the past is all been physical, you know, one-to-one -one. and it's paid off because as a tutor, like it's my job to make people, if, if, I, my students don't understand me or don't improve or progress, then that means I'm not doing my job well. And, you know, I've had really positive reviews from parents from the platform that I'm signed and, you know, currently as well. So, you know, that means, okay, I'm a, I'm a good tutor. So that means I can communicate messages well. That means, you know, that also helps me with the activism stuff, with the lobbying, you know, going to see my MP. So that means I can break down, you know, complex messages into very simple, which is also a good thing and as to yeah. what I'm doing, the bigger picture. So, you know, that that's good. And I also write, I have a blog, which I started in 2016, around the same time that I started to train and you know i've i've been i've managed to be consistent with it even though not always you know i i like to sometimes i think aloud a lot people think it's weird to talk by yourself i do that a lot because sometimes it's not every time that i want to pick the phone and call a friend and talk to or vent to but yeah. i just want to so i i, I was like, okay i need a channel to sometimes offload what i think so then I decided to start a blog and, you know, had comments like people say you write so well, you know, I like this topic. I like how you, and I'm like, oh, okay, good. So like, you know, I started not because of the comment, but I'm happy like people like what I'm doing and I want to continue with it. So, you know, you know, doing all this and I have, um, I have an autistic brother. So, um, you know, dealing with that to kind of, when I was, should I say, when the volunteering was not paying off in 2018, I went into a support worker PA, whichever one you want to call it, with an autistic um, teenager as well. And I've been, it's like more like a freelance, or should I say, not not full time, but freelance basis. And it's been also rewarding because, you know, you get to see it. Not Now I'm not a sister, but then I'm a, like a, a worker, or should I say, you know, I work with someone with such, you know, condition with challenging behavior as well so and you know the financial part has been rewarding because that also actually funded my master's program so i paid for my master's everything by myself when i moved to the mm -hmm. netherlands so yeah. you know getting that degree i didn't get a master's because it, it was i wanted to just for flex <laughs> that's not why I did. I did it because i wanted to do it because i knew it was an important part of where i'm going because most of these um, or jobs or roles like in the international development sector, you need a master's. It's a requirement and you need some level of experience. So the experience, I believe I have enough and I'm gathering enough. But if I don't have a master's, it, it makes it a bit hard. So I wanted to get it and I did it from a prestigious university. So for me, I'm like, you know, I'm done. But then Funny enough, what funded it was not my passion. I funded it from something else that I also do on the side. So, okay, yeah. Um, so at, at, at what point will you say that maybe 
person A or B has has really impacted his or her society? At what point? Or what are some of the things that you want to see from me to, to know that, yes, indeed, I've really caused a change in a specified society? I, I think... For... <laughs> See, if, like, I think I touched on this briefly, but if, if, let's say, I go talk to, um, I write a, a blog about my, I think I blogged about my, um, the campaign I worked on with Christian Aid about the climate justice thing, and yeah, you know, you, you read, I don't know who reads my blogs because I post it on all my socials, my LinkedIn, Instagram, um, Facebook, Twitter, and all that. So, People read it and, you know, maybe sometimes someone will, I receive like, you know, a comment, somebody has left a comment about, you know, something and, you know, all that, which, which to me, it's so far as like my story has touched one person, like it's good enough for me. But as to the wider impact for me, like, I think I touched on this as well about going to see my MP about this global fund. I think we'll work on it sometime this year as well, the one campaign, but like we want the UK government because you have the G7, like France, US, Canada commit to this amount of money. And maybe the UK mm-hmm. is still not kind of like jittery about committing. And then now because of civil society's campaign over how many months, because that was like the report or the result that came from the foreign and Commonwealth development office that due to like, you know, months of continuous civil societies campaigning and, you know, all the awareness of the campaign, they committed 1 billion instead of 1.8 billion. The first campaign I worked on with um, the one campaign as um, the the gender equality and education, the poverty sexes, we went to the European Parliament to, because I think the following year, the early 2018, they were going to vote for um, think funding towards, you know, some of these global issues like, you know, education and all that. So our, our, our message there was simple for them to vote for an increased increase in aid towards you know education for especially for young girls in developing countries so that was the message and i i did my part i delivered the message i made references to you know growing back home and all that and the result was that there was the, the vote they, they voted for an increase so that that is an impact right there because if let's say the 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 the, the budget was i don't know let's say 60 pounds and now it's 120 pounds if it gets into the right hand and it's channeled into what it's supposed to be channeled into, then that is like, you no know, young girl's life somewhere in Africa or somewhere in a town or village being changed yeah. because of, you know, me here using my voice to, 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 to campaign for them. So like, to me, that is like, you know, the, the, the bigger picture for me, you know, being able to be on the other side of the globe, being passionate about these things, using my voice to be able to ensure that, you know, people, people have better lives like this um last year we went to parliament for this east africa hunger crisis and look some images you see you see some statistics and it kind of ruins your day because you can't believe that human beings actually do not have water to drink they, <laughs> they, they are, their livelihood or you know it has been captured right. because of no rains or because of flooding mm-hmm. or because of so and the, the this is not a movie this is someone's real life you know the same way you're here enjoying electricity and you know you you go to tesco's or even if you are not employed full-time employee can get universal credit yeah please people are suffering you know on the other side of the planet like so if if you know as a human being let's even forget the tag as an activist as a human being yeah. you read yeah. the news you see these things it should sort of like trigger something in you like so if it, 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 and and sometimes you know, i find it hard that you go and see or we go and see mps or we write to mps some some of my my colleagues write to their mps and they never get a response some get a response and it's negative in a negative, you know, feedback and all that. And it's quite shocking, like, to see that someone really, you know, sees all this and doesn't care. But then that's the kind of world we live in, you see? So that is why that for people like me, like, I need to get to, into, like, this, 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 because I've identified my passion as this is what I want to do career-wise. And not just, okay. you know, volunteering, vol- like, at a point, no, at, not at a point, right now, like, I'm so, like determined to like get into some of these spaces like 
use my knowledge, everything that I've gained so far from what I've done over the years to be able to, you know, push for better policies, especially for my people back home. And, you know, not just that, also be able to fund some of some projects as well. Like, you know, I plan to, because listen, like uh, people back home who, you know, and I don't want to make this political, but you see, wh whenever I, I see, you know, pictures of children back home sitting on the floor and, you know, pregnant women having to cross rivers or children not having basic necessities, people dropping out of school because they don't have any, it, it's sad, you know, it's, it's sad because it's not in, in a fair or in a sane world, these things shouldn't be happening at all. Yeah, and yeah. these people who are supposed to make these policies or make their lives better, like they are there in parliament, you know, throwing jabs at each other, you know, debating about ex gratia and millions of I'm sorry, but you know, I, I feel like I always tell my friends that <laughs> I, I can understand. I can understand where you're coming from and especially in the space where you operate, you see all these kind exactly. of you know, messy situations people exactly. find themselves in it's like, you know, and where you find yourself like an individual. When you make yeah. those comparisons, you are not able to actually understand why a typical human being should should go through yeah. such challenges of yeah. life. And, yeah. yeah so, so i can understand your some of your so I, I i i said that look i always tell my friends that look these people don't care about you they they don't care about the average Ghanaian or the average citizen and unfortunately yeah. for us we we, we 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 the individuals really have to do what we have to do to 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 make the little little changes that we want to see and not to, not to stay off topic like recently i've seen these guys called the bus stop boys who have taken it upon themselves to clean gutters doing yeah. all these yeah. things volunteering you see, yeah. the, these are the real heroes. Like these are the because they are saving Ghana from flooding. Because June and July is about it, August is about to be here, and it will yeah. rain. You you can't stop the rain. It will rain. But have you you know put measures in place to ensure that when it rains, there is no flooding? You will think that this. I think the June twenty seventeen or twenty eighteen thing that happened with the flooding and the explosion at the this um filling station or whatever would. Yeah. Would, would 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 know give us as a country a source of some agency? You think that those children who cross where I think they were crossing the river to go to school and they all they they they, they died. You would think that certain things that happen will just like you know give people some sort of like you know sit actually sit up and pay attention but unfortunately it doesn't happen so for me like i'm tired of i still criticize but i'm tired of talking because it's like you're talking in a very a dark place like you know alone in a closed building and it's like it's not going any not going anywhere so like god help me like I have all these like initiatives or whatever to really like especially because my my thing is education like it sucks and it it shouldn't be that, you know, people still have to be in school and, you know, be, be, be sitting on the floor, not have even books or not have access to basic things that they need to get, like an all round education. It's, 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 it's not supposed to be for a country that, you know, we claim to, you know, be doing economically well, quote unquote. And, you know, there's so many promises and manifest in, and all that charade, yeah. but. So yeah. I, 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 as an individual, like me, I, 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 I grew up in Ghana, but I mean, I've been here for over a decade now, but I, I obviously I relate, I'm, I'm, I'm Ghanaian regardless. And I, I want to see a better Ghana. So being here and being able to do some of these things, I always tell my friends that I want to actually do things on the grassroots level as well, because, you know, sometimes you, you do these things and it gets to a point where you also want to do something yourself, like personally, individually, like put your name on something or like get into that sort of like, um, okay, this is the impact that I've done great, but this is also something that I initiate, initiated my own idea. This is something that I thought because of through my years of this and I've done this and then I'm proud of myself because now I built this school and now maybe children can go to school for free. This, um, what's the name? This, I think he, he's a Liberian, Ghanaian Liberian comedian, Michael Blackson. I think last year he yeah. built a, he built a very nice, beautiful school. I think in a, in his mother's village, like he took what, well, I think a few, a year or some months to build it. And this is something mm -hmm. that an individual did. So can you imagine if individuals 
did you know built hospitals hospitals especially schools and all these things you know developed like all all, all sectors of the economy with their own initiative like because as for the leaders there if you say we are waiting i think i think that i think that largely it's it's a collective effort and more or less it starts from somewhere so yeah when people get into this space of volunteerism and, you know, giving back to the society, yeah. making social impact and, and making like their, their personal responsibility or social responsibility. And they are more or less helping people in, in, in those regards. It, it cushions people to do also what they, they have to yeah. do. And so with, with the issue of, you know, talking about finding people or, you know, uh, own human beings in some of these messy situations, it's it's it that way where you have also you know help people form these organizations, align yourself with these organizations, and you're also making an impact in your own small way. Yeah. yeah so through that, you are able to form or co-found this global activist network. Yeah. Yes. What was the reason behind why why did you decide to set up or co-found that that um network and what was what what are you trying to achieve yeah so um my friend actually she and i we are part of um this the one program and she she and i were also the only ones selected from the program to attend the 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 the, the, the gates foundation um goalkeepers last year and yeah. she approached me somewhere i think july last year that oh like she has this idea and she she thinks I'll be a good addition so I should have a think about it and then you know we spoke a couple of times and calls and all that and we decided the name what we plan to do so why I decided to do or join this was because like I said like there are things that I want to do it's just left with you know the funding to push it like but for this well, we still had to fund it a bit, like, you know, our website and, you know, the platforms that we use and all that. But it's not that big, big money. But even with this, like, going forward, we, we want to apply for funding. And if we can't afford, use our own funding to fund, like, you know, people, like the story of the nurse who had to, you know, not cut her hair. You know, yeah. all those people who are really at the grassroots doing amazing work, doing all the sacrificial things. Like, we want to be able to be able to fund them, you know, to be able to continue doing the, the good work that they are doing in their community. So like more like raise the profile of grassroots activists, because I, I think that look, sometimes I see, you know, all, all these awards, what, what under 40, under 30, hundred most mm -hmm. powerful women and hundred. Yeah. I always tell people, look, look, there are people doing amazing things that amazing the media doesn't that, yeah. reach. Yeah. Like, like this, 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 this woman, I'm so, I'm so glad that the Gates Foundation invited her, but I was, I was telling my friend that th these are the people who actually deserve, you know, these platforms, because mm -hmm. if you are a rich millionaire, you, you, I'm not saying, I, I'm not saying this, but, but if you're already self-made and you are donating, you know, yeah. something that probably you, you are, it, it won't really affect your bank account like that. I'm talking about people who are like, you know, they have like 10 pounds it's more or less when when you go to the bible it's like when the woman who gave her last coins exactly that she was appreciated exactly. and recognized by by jesus exactly more than the person giving billions of of money exactly. or something yeah, so exactly just like the similar case or, exactly yeah. so there are people who are actually you know in difficult situations themselves but in those difficult situations they are also you know doing amazing where they're impacting to help their... people connect people exactly so the lives of people to me those those are the me to me those are the real heroes so you know that lady i was telling my friend that i think we we there's we, we know her name i think she's on the gates foundation where we should try and one day bring her on board and maybe come in like have a conversation or that because like you know these 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 lists and these were were, were top hundred. It's great, but I feel like you know people are there, and you know they are because you know people. Are, I'm 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 quite active on Twitter now because of the activism work, and I see people say things that you you sit in a cry and you think that's the whole Ghana. If you go to yeah. you go to like villages, towns, the, the hinterlands, you will be shocked at the level of poverty in the country. And th these are the things that you know these party food soldiers or whatever they call themselves they don't want you to 
to to to to hear but you can you you it's reality you can't do anything about it so yeah. for me like this whole platform is just to give credence and you know like thumbs up or raise the profile bring those people on board like to come and share their stories to like you know not just share their stories as well like as a network like how can we support them as well because i don't think it's enough you know if you invite people somebody let's say is oh actually i know this girl who is in Koforidia with her mom and they 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 they, they have a school and they, it, it's only she and her mom that runs it, the two of them so the day she is sick or she or her mom is sick they have to close down the school oh yeah this is happening in 2024 okay. like so and i think it's it's um they, they, the children don't pay school fees as well because their parents can't afford yeah. Because somebody probably has to decide between, would have to decide between taking their paying school fees or feeding. And they'll probably choose feeding about, over paying fees. So mm-hmm. it, it, it shouldn't be that way. But this is happening. So the other day she was telling me, and I was, I was, I was sad. I was like, you know, I can't believe this is happening in the country where we hear um, what, what, what million dollars was in the minister's house today. We hear, yeah. you know, all kinds of scandals and all that. Yeah. It, it shouldn't be happening in a country where there's a so-called free SHS. And, you know, we, we, we all know it's, it's just a, a, a very, I don't, I don't even know how to describe it, but it's also another story for another day. So I, I told her that like, you know, this is what me and my friend has, we've, we've co-founded this thing. And the next time I'm in Ghana, I, I, would, I want to, you know, come to her, the school. I want to meet her, her mom. Because these are some of the things that, you know, people people should hear yeah, about. This is someone and her mom providing free education to children. And so, obviously... So, 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 your, main focus, your main focus is on <laughs> poverty, uh, let's say, minimization or eradication and then also betterment of people improving the lives of people that was the main focus of you know forming that um activist network yeah because at the end of the day you know the the goal number one is no poverty and like i said in the beginning that there's no way we can reach no poverty by 2030 in fact yeah. there's no way we can reach 20, um, no poverty till the end of the world i think yeah. poverty is a tool that a lot of leaders keep people in to manipulate them forever well it's it's also another another the topic for another day <laughs> yeah so th- th- this this and and unfortunately these are the same people who you know join queues to vote for the same leaders every four years yeah. and if i don't keep you in a state where you need me to come ask for more how 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 would I vote power over you? You know, so so th- th- these are the issues. And people, unfortunately, the literacy level in our country too is quite low. And mm-hmm. I always tell people that, in as much as I see a lot of youth are angry on Twitter, organizing protests, then uh, what what lobby house and all that, great. But then your aunties and your uncles are in the village. Those people need to be sensitized because twitter is not a real world twitter is just a, a, a tiny percentage of the whole population and how many people are on on social media or you know who see these things so for me like as a person who has been here i've gone to, I've, I've lived in ghana grew up in ghana till i finished secondary school came here for university and i've been here since and i've kind of gone to gotten the opportunity to see like two sides of the world i'm not saying that this place that we are is perfect of course there's no perfect country in the world but i'm I, i'm i'm saying that listen like the basic necessities basic if necessities. You compare one is definitely better than the other so of course like they, yeah. we shouldn't we, sh- we, sh- we shouldn't even like there are certain things that and i i, I come from a very strong mpp um, family but i'm not even political i don't belong to any political party because I, I, I want to see, like, I I'm, I care more about the country than politics. It's Ghana first before any political col- party colors or whatever. Yeah. So if edu- if it's education, like, um okay, like, this is the UN's um, goal towards um, education equality by 2030. How far have you gone towards reaching that or attaining that? This is um, health, good health and well-being. Health policies, how far... Th- that is what I'm concerned about because that is the most important thing. As for who will do it or all those things, it, it's... 
about um, party and this person said like it's not necessary like because people are dying people are losing their lives every day because they couldn't get what well, well, uh, maybe some, somebody um, couldn't get oxygen somebody couldn't get a hospital bed so like these things shouldn't be happening and that is what i'm angry about that it, it basic necessities as, as such as health shouldn't be something that is too much to ask for and like for yes, me so, so i think i think that i think that you see um this this art of volunteerism in as much as those people that we've put in the helm of affairs are not doing what mm -hmm. in larger extent they are supposed to do mm -hmm. that is why at a point, we also need to encourage ourselves as, yeah, as, in, as, our citizens, as citizens of the land to also yeah. take up some of these responsibilities. Like you are doing, for instance, now you've created, you know, a network that is with yeah. the aim, which aligns with some of the SDGs and yeah. trying to also support what the, the, the whole UN is doing or a government yeah. sector is doing. So it's all part of inculcating a certain kind of volunteerism and a certain yeah. kind of making an impact in the lives of people. Yeah. And when we as individuals take up some of these roles, it, it also more or less like lessen that huge burden on, on yeah. let's say, what we call as government. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, improving the lives of people. Like you are talking about this lady who is just avoided cutting her hair at yeah. a point and using the money to support other people. These are all things that we have to encourage and inculcate in, yeah. in, in our, our people as, as we are growing up. Because yeah. nobody wants to... That is why I ask with a question of money, whether you, you, you are financially mm -hmm. rewarded or not. Because well, in a world mm -hmm. where now we are all looking for money, mm -hmm. nobody wants to do anything more or less for free. Yeah. You see? And that is where a bit of, you know, a challenge comes in. Mm -hmm. How many people are ready to sacrifice? How many mm -hmm. people are ready to go into this act of volunteerism yeah. and dedicate their time and also, like, say, I'm not working. I, mm -hmm. should, I should sacrifice my life for my, uh, another human being to, to live a better life because mm -hmm. I think that maybe I am in an advantageous position. So it's all good. It's all good that, yes, you are, you are really doing well. You are championing a good cause. And all the networks that you've built, yes, I also encourage you that you also use those networks to also connect to where you need to connect and connect all the dots where you also need to go and, and improve the lives of people. And I think that Rome, as they say, is not was not built in a day. So it's just a matter of time. Gradually, as, as they said, maybe like 2030, they are eradicating poverty where, you know, you as part yeah, of it. Yeah. It's, it's unrealistic so maybe we're standing to 2050 hmm. maybe that, that so it's you know one step at a time trying to make things better and each and every day we know that yes definitely at least if you improve uh, the life of even one person or one girl or one lady at yeah. least you know that yes you've you've changed the life of maybe an entire like generation because that person will have an effect on 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 a generation coming or yeah. in his in his or her generation at the point so it, it's 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 a collaborative effort it's a it's a collaborative effort and I think that we all need to come on board we all need to support we all need to find you know all in in our various spaces where things are not right we need to also identify them and try to veer towards and not be like it's it's you know I'm for myself. And God is for us. For that is more or less <laughs> some of some of the ideologies we have developed. That yes, I'm for myself. I'm for my family. Whatever happens to the other family at the other end, I do not necessarily care. Mm -hmm. And it's all about you know what largely the world preaches love. So yeah. if you love, you want to give back to the society. If you love, you want to care about what is going on and trying to effect a change in the society. Yes, yeah, so. Um, autism. I'm not a stigma project. How how did you get on that project, and what are you trying to achieve with that kind of project? Um. Yeah. So uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the um, Guba Foundation, which is the acronym for Grow Unite Build Africa, mm -hmm. founded by um Ghana's um Den 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 Dental Martin. Yeah. yeah. So um, I know her within like you know 
the entertainment circles in Ghana, you know, she's really well connected, like connecting Ghanaian artists and all that to, you know, all these um, amazing, you know, connects. Like, you know, we have, I think, um, a Grammy, a African Grammy something. Like, I think they launched it last year or so. So, you know, it's all like, you know, providing a platform to, you know, Black um black um, yeah, artists and all that yeah the community in general so um i know about her guba foundation guba expo guba enterprise guba awards and um i think early this year or late last year i saw that they were advertising for um a freelance project coordinator for this autism i'm not a stigma so i think they started somewhere 2019 they went to house of commons they, they went around did some church tours speaking to especially you know people within the black community about this condition and how to accept it as a norm and you know this whole st- yeah. sort of myth surrounding it because like i said i have a brother who is autistic as well so mm-hmm. i kind of uh, privy to some of these really? things yeah so um when i saw it i was like oh okay um this is actually cool and you know i have an experience you know dealing with you know children living on autism as a sister and you know as a, a worker as well and the role sounded interesting so i just went for it and yeah um i was successful so just started last month and um, so it's an 18 month long term project so it's from february this year to next year july and the okay. uh, the aim is to raise awareness about autism within the Black, Asian, minor, minority ethnic groups in London specifically. So we are proudly sponsored by the National Lottery Community Fund. So um, I think um, according to the terms of the fund, it's um, the awareness is um, in, within these two areas, East and North London. So we launched it last month with a webinar which was very well attended. Surprisingly, we, it was meant to be like an hour maximum an hour and a half it ended up being like almost three hours because wow. you know people yeah people were engaging a lot and you know that that kind of told us something that okay there's people people are interested and you know yeah willing to come on board so currently we are planning our first in-person event you know getting venues for events especially a place like london is crazy so we are having like a coffee brunch sort of with few parents um, of autistic children next week um, in London. And then mm-hmm. next month, we have like an autism awareness and acceptance exhibition of a 12 year old autistic girl who is an amazing artist. So we are showcasing, you know, her art uh, somewhere in London where we invite the, the public and also private viewing of it as well. And we are also doing uh, next, I think, first week of april the whole of april is autism awareness month so um the national autistic society is organizing a walk or encouraging people to join it but we as the guba foundation we are also planning to join the walk as well and so we are organizing our own walk which we'll, we will broadcast on our socials once, once it's finalized but yeah just to raise awareness about you know autism as well and we are planning events also with churches we're planning to collaborate with churches and you know youth hubs youth community centers and individuals um across these two areas east and north london and even you know other parts of the uk because we'll also be doing webinars as well um constantly so yeah it's just you basically um for people within the black community and minority ethnic groups to accept and embrace autism as a norm and to celebrate the diversity and the talents in, in within the community as well so that is basically the the whole concept of the project wow so you you are just preaching to the nations or specifically to these two um let's say areas that yeah. they should be able to accept the reality of autism yeah and not stigmatize against yeah. some of some of these children having some of these conditions yeah and that that is that is really great that is really great i when when i chanced upon that project i i was like what is this project about so i started reading a bit about it and i saw like the framework and everything else okay this this is a really good thing and so the whole of your life you have dedicated this to volunteerism and <laughs> well yeah for for this for this project i'm like a freelance consultant so like it's okay. it's paid but yes yeah, just few few hours commitment per month but i mean it, it, 
even with whether it's unpaid or not, like I said, I've done like the sort of things that if I was paid, like I would have gotten a lot of money. So, mm-hmm. like for me, I'm it's 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 a good experience. Like you know, with the subjects or the topic which is autism, and you know what yeah. we are we're trying to do with the project, and as we are going on, like I'm also learning a lot as well as an individual, and even you know someone who's already kind kind of familiar with the condition. So, it's it's eye opening, and yeah, like. Actually, I remember when I finished uni in 2016, uh, my my um, my faculty interviewed, did an interview and I spoke about how I plan to do something within the autism space back home in Ghana. Because I think now people are, I think I know there are some autism centers and like people are beginning to embrace and understand the condition. But I can't say the same for many years ago. In fact, my, my brother, like I said, my brother didn't grow up in Ghana. He grew up with my parents um back in Italy, then they moved to the UK and yeah. any time I remember I was young but I still remember how, you know, <laughs> people be recommending pastors to my parents and they go from this one to this one and it's always stories, yeah. money, money, right. money, 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 money. And it's it was so sort of ridiculous. And you know, I, I I didn't believe in all those things and it is just I'm for even I mean you can be a Christian and still understand certain medical conditions that it's the fact that you know you're a christian and you know you have it's difficult i'm not gonna lie it's because it's a difficult condition and hats off to parents and you know families who have such children because it's not easy like take it from someone who has lived with you know someone in the same house with this condition but that doesn't also mean that you should easily make yourself a target for some of these fake pastors and their prophecies and all that because it tears families apart and you know they say all kinds of things just to get your money and it's 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 not it's not good so i'm i'm happy to be on this because you know you you hear you have the opportunity to hear from you know people as well share their stories and you know how we have um, educational psychologists and um special education needs professionals also come in to our first webinar to talk about you know this in detail from a, a medical field a medical angle so it, it's 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 it, it's informative it's 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 been um, a learning process for me and um hopefully i get to you know learn more about the experience as well so yeah wow 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 so what 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 is the biggest platform that you've mounted in this art of volunteerism and all these connections and the opportunities that you've had what is the biggest platform that you 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 mounted and say yes i have arrived in this journey <laughs> well the biggest platform hmm, that's an interesting question should i say if, if it's platform if you had asked me okay let me not change your question um the biggest fl- platform i'll say maybe is the goalkeepers okay so I remember I was supposed to attend with my co-founder. We were selected in 2022 to attend. By the time there was a bit of confusion or whatever, miscommunication. So it didn't come with, the opportunity didn't come with funding. And I mean, when I was younger, when I came fresh out of uni, oh my goodness, like I saved money like from working on campus and all that. So I remember I traveled first to Qatar for a research conference then I went to New York for youth assembly. It's also like for youth change makers and yeah. all these things was with my own money. And I, you know, I, I, I traveled to different about six, seven countries for some of these youth programs or, you know, other things. And, and it takes, a, it, it, it was, it drained a whole lot of, in fact, it took all of all, all my money away. And, mm-hmm. you know, looking back, I did all those things then, but now I won't do that. Like, I feel like, I've done all those things so that right now I have to, somebody has to pay me to come to those things or somebody has to sponsor me. I don't think I want to be using my money to pay to go to conference at this big age of my own. I don't, I don't think I should do that. So for the biggest platform, I think would be the goalkeepers by the Gates Foundation. So 2022, when we were not able to go due to the whole funding issue, then 2023, we were selected again. So it was like we were destined to go, the same two people. So, um, yeah, that was, I remember how the email came, you know, dear Gertrude Asumedu, like, you know, we'd like to invite you. And it's by invitation alone. You don't apply yeah. 
to go yeah. or attend. It's not like one of those opportunities you are invited. So if you're invited, it means they, they've seen that like, they were like, the email came out like, you know, we think somebody thinks you're, or we think you're making a difference in your community. Yeah. Yada, 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 and like, we would like to invite you, you know, that. And, you know, it was, you know, from there, they take, they ask for details and they, they, they cater for everything and then you, all, you have to just, just, you know, turn up and, you know, you meet people within the space. Some people like quite famous, some people to, you know, just like, you know, people like you and you have conversations and people from Indonesia, India, Pakistan, you know, this from all over the world, Africa, Asia, you know, and all over the place, like doing amazing work and you're like, you know, okay, like, I was more gingered, you know, to start this thing that we've just started, Global Active Network, Network, and also with my own initiative as well, because I feel like people people started with little, like even the money bit. But for me, like I want, I because I the money is what will do the work. Yeah. <laughs> so like, but then I and that's what I want to do this year, like because I feel like I've postponed it for a long time, and like it's time to actually put it into action. So yeah, I'll, I'll say it's the goalkeepers. Yeah, by the Gates Foundation. What 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 is their main role? What actually did they do? What the is Gates, their focus with the with the gatekeepers? Yeah. So the the Gates Foundation's uh, um co-chaired by Bill Gates and um, his ex-wife Melinda Gates. Yeah. So um they I think that this goalkeepers was started in 2018, if I'm not wrong. So they bring together so. Goalkeepers, if you're not careful, you think it's like football goalkeeper. So yeah, the yeah. Goal, goalkeeper is just related to the goalkeepers related to the SDGs, the sustainable development goals. So goalkeeper means like people who are working towards the goals, the SDGs. Yeah. Or the you know the global goals like people like okay. to refer to it. So you know you find yourself in a room where someone is working on maternal health, someone is working on climate crisis, someone is working on gender equality, someone is working on education, someone is working on life on water, life on land, um, sustainable cities. So different, 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 different SDGs, and you know people are working on all these things. So like it's just a a, a hub or should I say a community of global activists from different corners of the world just you know finding themselves in one place you know just celebrating their, their stories and you know interacting with each other I actually met um so I've connected with three people from there that I'm still in touch with one of them is this Ghanaian lady she works with the Gates Foundation in South Africa so that's where she's based I think she's a director or something so we've had conversations I told her about this um, global activist network and you know she was happy yeah. and she she wanted us she wants us to have a discussion sometime in the future just you know to hear more about it and how she can support and all that so i'm happy about that i also met this girl she won the i don't know if you know about global citizen so she won the global citizen um, prize i think last year in she went to france and then she went to the u.s again for the global citizen concert the one they held in ghana so they hold okay. some like in the u.s in new york and across different parts of the world so she got she's into farming so she's into mushroom farming and she's done she's doing amazing work in kenya so um you know she won her awards and she came for the goalkeepers in new york and then you know she's back in kenya and she's been traveling you know to some of these conferences delivering talks and she's teaching people especially women within their community how to farm going to farming and you know that's you know amazing we're contributing to ending hunger or just a you know feeding people nutrition and and i also met met this lady as well who also i think works in one of the un organizations you know and we talk once in a while so you know these are some of the you know the, the amazing people you'd like to have within your you know your reach or your connection i am, I am, I am really inspired because like you said if it's not volunteerism in like sometimes in a real world it's even difficult to even connect with yeah. some of these people yeah with some of these organizations and yeah yeah because yeah. like i asked does it pay so indirectly these are some of the connections these are some yeah. of the networks that you are building through the act of volunteerism yeah what, what has been some of the challenges through this journey that you've done for like seven years through from establishing your own networks, building your own networks, connecting with people. What has been some of the challenges that you want to share with us? Oh, the challenge is there. Yeah, I'll just say giving up. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I want to give up, like, you know, I'm, I'm done because, you know, giving up in terms of like, you know, you, 
you know you're doing great work and you know you want to apply these skills in an organization in charity or third sector i mean some of these charities that i've mentioned and you know you, you don't get through you apply for some of these prestigious programs fellowships and you know you don't get into where and it's quite hard it takes a toll on you because but then I, I i i and when i find some of these opportunities i share with friends also who are within the space so um recently i i shared this there was this there was this policy fellowship it's an austrian um organization that organizes it and none of the people including myself who applied for it got it so i was like yeah. really like we were shocked also we were like what kind of people were they looking for in fact <laughs> my co-founder is still kind of like pissed like because she she brings it up every now and then she's like i can't believe that they didn't and i'm like you know what just forget about it it happens like to the best of us even not sometimes these things just happen so the challenges are just like sometimes you feel like what's the point of doing all these things when it's not it won't get me to where i want to be you know, like, cause you, 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 volunteering is great, but you still want to, like I said, I want to get into some of these spaces that, you know, make formulate and implement some of these policies that we campaign for, but, you know, getting into it is so difficult. And I believe in the power of networking people have, I mean, I have been able to, you know, do some of these things through volunteering, through maybe networking, through maybe social media and all that, or sometimes just, you know, reaching out to people. But then sometimes, I mean, you want to see the end of, of this this whole thing that you're doing. Okay, like, I want to get here. I'm I'm trying to get this experience. And I put on my CV, I talk about it in my cover letter, I show, you know, brag, whatever, but it's still not quite getting you into all these spaces. So you ask yourself, like, you know, what's the point? But for me, like, even if I feel like giving up, I still, still, you know, pursue some of these things because... I mean, I can't stop. It's like you're on a mission and you want to get something. And the fact that you get tired or you get pissed or somebody annoys you, it doesn't mean that you stop. You you just have to get over it and just, you know, calm down and just get up and still keep on going, really. So for me, it's just been the edge of not giving it, the edge to give up sometimes just because, you know, it's like, so most of the work and the impacts we've done is still not enough to get us into some of these places that we really want to be. But I think to me, it's just, it's, 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 it's almost here. I mean, co-founding this global service network has been a huge, you know, a huge step for me, you know? So mm -hmm. that's like one of the boxes that I'll take, but like now it's more like, cause getting funding is also really hard because recently there's been a lot of cuts in the sector in the third sector yeah. a lot of charities yeah. are you know, have been hit with these cuts so but then I, I i still want to you know pursue these the, the, i mean these um roles or these jobs within the it's not even about you and but within organizations that i can see myself you know making an uh, impact or should i say pursuing change then be able to fund these initiatives i have have in mind back home great great so if if not for activism volunteerism what mm -hmm. what would you be doing what what would have been the the, the other thing that you, you'll be engaged in i so i remember when i was in when i was about to go to secondary school mm -hmm. one uncle well uncle my, my grandfather or whatever he was like i should choose science and i was like the fact that I was I was good in maths and science in in, in primary and JSS doesn't mean I want to become a medical doctor. I mean, yeah. it's, there's nothing wrong with being a medical doctor, but it's it's not even for me. So yeah. I like to I liked languages when I was in in in, in school. In, I mean, primary and JSS, like English, French, tree. Like, there's no way I'll fail in tree. Like, oh, I won't do well in tree. Like, it's not. French too was one of my favorite, even in secondary school and English as well. So, and I like, and when I went to secondary school, I did history, history, um, French, um, literature and, um, economics and all the, it's like uh, general art. So I like topics that allow me to express myself, like mm -hmm. critically analyze, explain, give examples, you know, all those kind of things. Like, so that's my kind of thing. And, um, Growing up, I actually wanted to be a journalist, but I was told that like journalists, like money, everything was just watered down they, to the money. Money. That's why I keep emphasizing or I keep stressing on this. And I, 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 I don't, I don't like the fact that I mean, yes, we are in the real world, and yes, money matters, but I don't like the fact fact that everything is watered down to money. 
like money, money, money. And this money that we are even killing ourselves for, like, how much are we even making in the end? Yes. I, I, I feel like, you see, like, I've, I've, I, my, my grandma raised me. My grandma died just like three days after I'd seen it in 2021. Oh, and I feel like recently, for some reason, you know how they say that grief is like, grief is not, it, it, it kind of doesn't end. So mm-hmm. sometimes you feel like you're over it. Then years later, it's like you're all over, you're starting the process all over again. Yeah, it pops so, up again. Exactly. So recently for the past few days, it's like, I'm, I'm like, I've started again and it's, it's kind of made me like, it, it makes me think deeply about life, like, and, you know, losing friends and acquaintances, like growing up people within my same age brackets. I know about four or five people have died in the past two, three years. So yeah. it, it kind of gets me thinking about my purpose as a human being that you see at the end of the day, I'm not saying that I'm not going to chase money, but for me as a person, I'm more interested in doing the things that I really want to do. Mm-hmm. Even if I don't get monetary value, because I don't know, you know, they say, Oh, it will come. Money will come. Money will come. But even if it doesn't come, which will be unfortunate, but I still want to be remembered for something or do the things that I really, really wanted to do. Like okay. for me, that has been like, something that has been guiding me for some years now. So with, you know, not getting the high paying job that I wanted after COVID, I mean, after I finished my master's and COVID, you know, COVID was killing people. I should be grateful that I was alive because I could have also been dead. You see, because the people that died, I'm not better than them. In fact, I I was, I was, I was born in Italy and um, growing up, I went to visit my parents, I think two or three times when they were there. And, I think some people back home still th- thought I was in Italy. So I had people, because people were, people died in Italy a lot during the COVID period. Like, I think they experienced, if not one of the highest, the highest deaths in Europe. So I think I remember some people back home in Ghana messaging me, you know, I um, are you and your parents okay? And uh, they heard about what's happening in Italy. And I was like, I'm not in Italy. Um, at the time, I was actually in the Netherlands because I was just wrapping up my, my master. But I was like, oh, my parents are in the UK. Like, they're all fine. So, you know, some of these things I put into, into perspective and it makes me reflect about life in general. Like, you know, after all the, the, the hula balu and all the, you need to make money, I need to make money and all those things. At the end of the day, like, as for me personally, I don't want to die. I don't know how it feels like to die after, after death, but I don't want to like, not live my life or do the things I really want to do. And I feel like it would just be a waste of space or, you know, a waste of, you know, my whole life. So, um, I'm happy that I, I found something doing that I really like, and I want to still do it. Like, you know, there are certain things that I, I do, you know, you, you know, you have people, you know how back home is, you know, people just mm-hmm. contact you. Maybe they have to pay school fees. They have to pay this. You have to pay this. And, you know, you send money, you do this. And it's, it's, in one way or the other, it's all like impacting people's life. But for me, I want to like still do something. Like I want to build a school in Ghana. Like that's something I want to do. And yeah. I want to achieve that in some few years time. And I want to do this, do that. And, you know, when I do those things, I'll be fulfilled. Maybe I'll not be, I don't even want to be the richest person on earth or whatever, but with the little that I have, if I'm able to do something that, I, you know, I'll be able to, name after my grandma or be able to do something that will actually make me feel proud or like as a legacy or something that that's the most important thing to me wow. so wow. I'm, I'm, I'm really touched and inspired by 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 the things you said and the things you are doing in this space so when all is said and done how do you want to be remembered as Gertrude Asumadu who came to do what when all is said and done in this space, in your journey of entrepreneurship or in your journey of volunteerism, in your journey of making social impact, whatever you are doing to support humanity, when all is said and done, how do you want to be remembered? Well, I think I want to be remembered as somebody who truly lived their life to the fullest, um, irrespective of the challenges, because if, if I had all the resources I needed, I, would, I, I wouldn't even be here. I would like be here. I mean, I won't be in UK. I'll, I'll be back home in Ghana because that is where, that is where like the, 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 my eyes are on. 
because you know I, I being here is like a means to an end or you know it, it's it's good for me to be here for now but yes. with, with all the ideas and the other things i want to do this is not the destination this is not the end it's back home you know like we said before like you, you need to have a certain you know love for your country or patriotism to 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 you know actually go back there and sure, do some sure, of these sure. things and you know it's not composed it's not by not everybody loves god <laughs> i mean i, I can't oh, yeah. even blame them if they don't yeah. but um for me like i i i have you know that connection back home so i i i, I want to do that and then you know do it well not just even in the education sector and all that but in other sectors as well so i i just wanted to be i want to be remembered for somebody who 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 lived life to the fullest who lived their their purpose and in so doing like inspired people and impacted society positively yeah great great i think that that is that is the the ultimate that is the yeah. ultimate goal for every human being but you know unfortunately some of the challenges and stuff sometimes throw us away from the oh, focus yeah. and we try to we shift the goalpost and we are chasing things that we are not supposed to chase oh yeah, yeah. so what what would be your advice to young men young ladies who wants to get into act of volunteerism or who do not even want to get into that space because they believe that it's it's not a rewarding space so there's no point in spending your or, oh. your energy there what what would be your final advice or what would be your advice to them well as for this thing uh, advice because i think <laughs> See, like, let me just make reference to this, these uh, bus stop boys again. <laughs> yeah, what yeah. they are doing is, is, is like in the tree where they say, a, a like, you, you know, you're, yeah, yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. you're, like, they're, you're giving more or like, less dedicated and self Yeah, you're, you're, self you're, you're I mean, somebody, you wake up, I think on Independence Day, they, they cleared somewhere around, not too far from where I lived in Ghana, St. John's. I grew up in Tantra Hill. So I think they cleared around um, um, St. John's there about. And, you know, the before and the after picture, it was amazing. They I think they got there around 6.30 a.m. Getting mm -hmm. me out of bed at 6.30 a.m., it has to be for money. I can't yeah. go. Ahead. But they got out of bed, like got there at 6 a.m. And I think they had people join them, not just the bus stop boys, but I think other citizens, youth also okay. joined them which was admirable, you know, and it was beautiful to see that, you know, despite all the, excuse me for my, but despite all the nonsense going on in the country, people still, you know, have that love for the country that on independence or on independence day, quote unquote, they still go and, you know, do this beautiful thing. And so as for the advice, I'll say that, look, um, and if you if you if you realize or if you notice, I'm making most references to Ghana because, like I said previously, like it's the it's the end for me because I believe that there's so much potential, but it just takes the right people yeah. with the right mindset to, to be able to channel some of these the, the, their energy, their resources, their money into you know to to, to developing the country. So, uh, as per the advice, I'll just say that at the end of the day. When you see something is wrong, most times you are the only person who can correct it. Not because other people, other people may, it's like you seeing um, a sachet water on the floor. And when I was in secondary school, like, I think there are a lot of things I picked in secondary school that is still part of my life. I cannot litter on the floor. I can't. It's not even about even being in UK. It's something that I can't do. So yeah. even if I go, even in Ghana, like, you know, I think, yeah, after secondary or when I was still, when I maybe buy something outside and I can't find, um, bin or something, bin, I keep, yeah. I, I keep, I keep it on me till I get home and I dispose it. Like it's something I can't do, but I can't say the same for others because they probably didn't have the same training like I did. So if you, like, you've seen like a, 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 a sachet, whatever, what, um, a water sachet like thing on the floor and you someone has seen you um you, they pass by like people have seen but it's not like they've not seen they've seen it but you have seen it and maybe there's there's something in you telling like you know it's not supposed to be there you go and pick it you've done it <laughs> like it, it made you uncomfortable and you picked it so like if some most times i'm sure this bus stop boys it was probably someone's idea that you know every july or guess is a rainy season it comes yeah. you know it's flat we talk about it on social media and the media for 
what then after that everybody forget it it happens every year we talk about it and someone decided to take the, the further step to desilt all the choked gutters clear with all these things and you know at the end of the day i'm sure that now that the rainy season is like few months away i'm sure there will definitely be some sort of change because somebody took that step to right the wrong and that's actually one of the motto the motto of my my secondary school but right wrong so like i think you you don't have to even be like love ghana or love your country or whatever just you being like triggered or passionate about something can move you to do something that you never thought of maybe somebody's um family member um died because of there were no hospital beds or there was no something in a hospital and because of that they take it upon themselves to maybe donate to someone um to the hospital so that somebody else doesn't have to lose their pop so this this is how it's that like you need to see that there's something wrong there are a lot of things wrong in, with our society with our country with the world yeah. you just need to pick something that kind of you can relate with or something that you like you're connected with in the way with a, a, whether it's a story or it's a, something that happened to you your parents or something and just do what you can like it, it doesn't even have to be something great or something that will make the news who cares whether it makes the news or not and i think that's what something that a lot of people get um carried away with like i said not every great thing makes it to the media and it doesn't really have to because w when the media was in the with or without the media like people are doing amazing where people are changing the world in the little way that they can so yeah. like we, we we all need to like have a bit of selflessness as well yeah it's it's okay to be selfish sometimes media and family home i don't care you know i'm only concerned about my life and my goals great yeah. but sometimes it's like if because it's not happened to you you think you are you are safe until it's at your doorstep so yeah. like some of these things you, you you just look around you and see maybe there's a child on the street who is always begging for money and if you can i don't know support them in any way maybe putting them into like um, a good um orphan orphanage or more if you can go ahead to maybe sponsor the educate like something like it, it it doesn't matter you can't you can't save the whole like you know world or you can't save all the children in the streets but if you can help one that is that's that's a statistic at least you've taken one person off the street at least you've saved one child for maybe being killed by a, a car or something so like i think that's just the mindset like you know people think changing the world or you know making an impact is something huge numbers no because if you do it if that person does it that person does it that's what comes together to you know make make the the change that we all want to see like they say be the change that you want to see so wow yeah. wow, wow wow this has been a very interesting conversation very insightful and it has all the points that we needed yet to to give to people for them to um have that mindset of volunteerism and also going ahead to make social impact in the lives of people giving back to the community or the society where they they, they are from or they are coming from because we are all connected like you said we are all connected and therefore what i give back to the society will help shape the life of somebody who also go ahead so it's like a relay of baton when I give yeah. the baton to another person, the other person also relay back to the person behind. And in all, in collectively, we are building a better world for ourselves because the world is for us. There is no one coming from anywhere to do it for us. So um, I really appreciate and I would say that I encourage you never give up on this journey of volunteerism because I believe that you are doing great. Yes, when I, I read your profile, I was amazed about the number of things you've done. When I was coming to to meet you i was reading from the one one campaign and the things how they were describing the things you've done the conferences you've been to and everything i was like wow people are really really you know shaping this world through the small things they are doing and for me it's it's, it's the small things that that really matters right and when you know that you have really made an impact you yourself you feel in your heart yeah and you are satisfied so combining this passion, what you have identified as an individual and you are champion, I think you are on good cause. So I would just say that keep on and then keep on till you know that, yes, you've, you've finished the race, you've, you've fought a good fight and the end, the crown, it will be yours. 
any final words you want to say before we wrap up? Well, yeah, um, thank you for your kind words. Uh, you know, sometimes you just need to hear, you know, it's good to affirm, you know, give, give yourself some words of affirmation, you know, yeah, I can yeah. do it, I'm good, I'm blessed, I'm, you know, I'm capable and all that. But sometimes it's it's really great when you hear it from someone else, you know, so thank you for that. And yeah, I would definitely not give up because, you know, if I gave up, um, few years ago, I would probably not even, you know, be here or I wouldn't have been on some of these platforms like the goalkeepers and other platforms that I've been on. So definitely I'm not going to give up. And, um, yeah, I'll just say, um, thank you as well for inviting me. I don't know why you invited me, but <laughs> thank you for the invitation. And, um, yeah, um, I'm get you that do on all social media handles, uh, platforms. So, um, if you want to follow me and my work and everything, yeah, you, you're you welcome to do so. And then, uh, yeah, um, we are all beacons of hope and change. So I hope that in every little corner or everywhere we find ourselves in this, you know, world with all the problems and issues that we have going on, let's 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 you know make someone's day let's light up someone's life in one way or the other one time i think on instagram there's this handle humans of new york where they share inspiring stories so i think i don't know if it was on that platform but i saw this story of how this girl who came from kenya to a u.s i can't remember the story in full but basically she met this white couple and they took her in as their own child sponsored her fees and you know the story was very beautiful because how somebody who is not related to you by blood or even by race you know to be able to take it upon themselves to 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 invest in you it's it's one of the most selfless things ever that someone could do because they could have used their money to buy a house or do anything else you know it's their money and they have every right to spend, but they decided to invest in someone's life and education. The reason why I'm passionate about education is because it's an investment in someone's life. What my late grandmother used to say that you ask for your certificate, nobody can take it away from you. Like it, even if they take it away, you still have the knowledge. Nobody can take it away from you. So education is one, if not the best investment that every parent or every child, can, every parent can give to their children or every child can get. So that's the reason why, because I know what education has done for me, like, and the, the, the doors that's open for me. So as you know, an activist, like I started, I'm still passionate about education primarily, but I've gone on to do other things. So it was a beautiful story to see how, you know, people can, you know, change people's life through selflessness. And that's why I think it's important that we all, you know, told that line and do the same. And then, yeah, together, 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 and kakaraka, like, you know, little by little, we can, we can, we can create the world we want to see one way or the other. So yeah, that would be my, my final words. Great, great, great. So we've come to the end of this all exciting episode on the King Obed podcast. Today we've delved deeper into the, subject of making impact giving back to society and also volunteerism as an individual so all of us have a duty or a role to play and it's our responsibility as individuals to give back to the society where we are coming from in order to help to shape the world that we want and be the agent of change and the change that we want to see we should partake in it and collectively we will be a world where everyone will enjoy to be living in. So this has been the Kenobed podcast. I know you've learned a lot. I know you've 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 been inspired by the works of my guest and the beautiful and amazing things she and her team have been doing and everything. So this is the end of the show. Thank you very much for watching and for listening. Bye bye.